I want to take a look at creating UI scenes with UDK. A UI scene allows you to present a user interface to the player through which they can influence and trigger in-game events through Kismet. Now, in this level, we have the exact same setup that we had in our cinematics demonstration in which we've got a robot which will threaten the player and there's a little movie that will play, all sorts of cool stuff. But if we jump back here to the back and just jump right into the game, there's a little switch on the wall. And if we use this switch, a user interface, a UI scene pops up with some information and it tells us to click the button to begin the sequence. If we click the button, we get a movie, and we get an ensuing firefight with this little battle robot. Now, what I'd like to do first is just give you a quick rundown, or kind of a general overview, if you will, of how this setup works, and then in the next video, we'll actually go through the process of setting it up. Now, let's begin inside the content browser, and I'm gonna take a look at the package that contains all of this stuff. Now, there are a few things that have been created prior to the video, and I'll walk you through those as well. Here is our UI scene. Now, we'll get to that in just a moment. Let me show you the assets that are actually being used in that UI scene first. We have a couple of textures and one material, all of which are very simple, easy to create on your end if you really wanted to. The first one is the background image that we're using in the UI. This is just a screenshot of that box that we had hanging on the wall. That's really all that is. Now, an important thing to note is once this texture was brought in, in its properties, we made sure to set its LOD group to texture group UI. Now, the other texture was created in Photoshop very quickly. It's just a rounded button. You can see here with a nice kind of teal color on it. Also, its LOD group was set to texture group UI. Now, a material was created with this button texture. Let's take a quick look at the material. It's just a little pulsating material. So the texture sample you see itself is being multiplied by a sign network where we take a time expression, run it into a sign, multiply that by 0.5 and add one. So we're going from a bright, intense white uh, down to a gray. And with those two multiplied together, we plug the result into a missive and plug the opacity, or I'm sorry, the alpha into opacity, which allows us to have these nice rounded colors, or rounded corners, excuse me. Now, the material itself has a blend mode of translucent and a lighting model of unlit, if you wanted to create this on your end. No other check boxes or anything are necessary in order to use this with a UI scene. Now, let's close out of the material editor, and let's take a quick look at the UI scene that I created. So here's the asset for it. I'll double click this, and this is the UI scene editor. Now. A very quick rundown of the user interface. We have a menu bar across the top with and the, the usual kind of stuff as well as some commands that uh, you may use pretty often or you might just use the right click menu or the toolbar. The toolbar has an area for various objects you can show and hide. For instance, I can select one of the widgets, uh, being this image back here in the background, and I can show and hide different things like uh, the selection handles for it as well as the selection outline. It's just a visibility field. Now, a second ago, I said the word widgets. And what is a widget? A widget is any asset or object that is used within your UI scene. This includes things like images, labels, buttons, or anything that you're going to create uh, to show information or with which you expect the player to interact. They're all widgets, and there are several different types of widgets you can make. Now, moving across the toolbar very briefly, we've got a viewport size dropdown that allows us to test out our UI at a variety of different resolutions. So we could crank this up to 1900, and you see that it does get a little bit stretched because that's a pretty extreme uh, widescreen view, but the overall, the effect is holding up. And we'll set that back to 1024. We can also set some guttering. So you'll notice as I increase this, we're getting a little bit of a border around the outer edge of the UI. And I'll go ahead and set that back to zero. We have a home button. It's called center on selected objects. If I kind of move the UI over here and grab our central button and click this, it's just going to center up on that button. That's what it's for. Next, we have an alignment section. We can align a specific widget to a location. So we could align to the top, center, or bottom vertically and horizontally. We can also align text both horizontally and vertically as well. 
We have a few tools. We have the selection tool and the focus chain tool. The selection tool is kind of like what it says. It's really just here to help you select different widgets and not do anything else, really. Uh, if you need to move them, you can just mouse over the various parts of the widget so I can put the button over here if I wanted to. Now, next to this, we have the focus chain tool. The purpose of the focus chain is to allow you to set up a way that the user could navigate through different widgets by hitting something like the tab key. Have uh, you ever filled out like a form online where you can type in uh, a value and then you hit tab and jump to the next field? That next field is defined by a focus chain, and that's what the focus chain tool is all about. It allows you to set up relationships so that the player could just tab right through. Now, next to this, we have the edit widget tool, which is currently not hooked up. So if you click on it, it's going to tell you that it hasn't been hooked up yet. Moving down, we have all of the different widgets we can create, including buttons, edit boxes, images, labels, label buttons, uh, toggle buttons, check boxes, lists, panels, and sliders. So if you just click on any one of these and drag, you'll create one. For instance, if I wanted to create a brand new button, just click on button and drag one out, and there's a brand new button. But I don't need that, so I'm going to delete. Do keep in mind, as soon as you create a brand new widget, your next click should probably be to jump back to the selection tool, because until you do, you're just going to keep on dragging out uh, various buttons. Now, across from here, we have some options that uh, we're not going to be playing with too much. We have Preview Platform, which for UDK is just for the PC, and we can try out different split screen modes. So here's a horizontal split screen mode. Uh, here's a favor top uh, vertical split screen. You know, we can split it up in a lot of different ways, but we're just going to be working with a split screen of none. Now, the other panels we have access to. We have a properties panel. This is context sensitive. If you have nothing selected, you're looking at the properties of the UI scene itself. As you select different widgets, these properties will update, allowing you to change the various uh, properties of that particular widget. Down from here, we have the scene tools panel. This includes two tabs. The scene tab, which gives you a hierarchical view excuse me, of all of the different kinds of widgets that you have in your scene. So here's the background image, and here's our button, and here's our label. And you see we can select them just by clicking on them here inside the scenes tab. Next to this, we have a list of all of the styles that we have here inside of our uh, HUD package. Now, a style is really just a collection of rules for how a certain widget is going to be displayed. What kind of picture does it have in the background? How is text aligned or oriented on it? What font face is used, etc. and so forth. There are three types of style. There are image styles, text styles, and combo styles. And a combo is just a combination of an image and text. For instance, our button would by default be using the button background style. Now these styles can be overridden. You can create your own styles. And we'll be taking a look at both of those operations as we move forward. Down from here, we have the docking panel. This allows you to take one widget and dock or attach it to another. And you can attach any side. You could attach the top side of one widget to the bottom of another, and, uh, and so on and so forth. The very bottom, we have the positioning panel. This allows you to control how your widgets will be positioned in the event of screen resizing. So just a few settings in here, and we'll be taking a look at that as we put our uh, object together. Now in the lower right hand corner there's one little thing I don't want to overlook and that is our drag grid settings. This is just like the drag grid inside the main editor. You have a drop down box that allows you to uh, control the size of your drag grid and you can of course switch that on and off. And all of this is dominated by our primary viewport which for the most part functions just like the orthographic views inside the main editor with one key difference. As we drag with the left mouse button, we get exactly the opposite, or not exactly, but almost the opposite kind of motion that we get uh, when we are uh, using the orthographic views in the main editor. What I mean is we're actually moving the camera as opposed to the object. For instance, if I drag my mouse to the left right now, You'll notice that the objects all move to the right. It's because I'm moving the camera, and so your objects will move in the opposite direction. It takes just a second of getting used to if you've been using the orthographic views a lot in the main editor. Now, that's a quick look at the interface. Let's take a really quick look at how this setup actually works. If we select this button and double-click it, it's going to open up Kismet. Now, this is not exactly this, the Kismet that we have in our level. This is UI Kismet, a special version of Kismet whose job is just to work with UI scenes. There are several different states that this uh, widget, this button, could be in. If we step down into the focused state, you'll see that there's an event here called on-click. Now, this is actually here by default, and that's how we'll be utilizing it. 
what it's doing is activating a level event, and then it's closing out the scene. Now let's jump out of the UI scene editor altogether. And what I'm going to do is open up the Kismet here inside the level. And here's our network, which causes our movie to happen and our little engagement with the robot. But check out the very beginning of it. First off, we have a remote event, which is firing off all of the action. But even before that, we have the moment that the player actually uses the trigger. It's opening up our UI scene. So the flow works like this. Player uses the trigger. The trigger opens up the UI scene. Now they're inside the UI scene. When they click the button, the UI kismet actually fires up the remote event, which triggers this guy, and then the rest, as they say, is history. So that's a quick overview of the process of how this works. Now in the next video, we're actually going to put this whole thing together so you can see how this works and how to create your own UI scenes in your games and levels. But that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.